to do now is demonstrate to you how you've instantiated and internalized the Arabic language and have allowed uh, the Arabic grammar to effectively live inside you and become intuitive. And I want to do that by looking at a specific verse of the Quran. It's one of my favorite verses because it relates to a person we all love uh, from the bottom of our hearts. And that is our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, what I'd like to do is start off with a very simple uh, non-Quranic sentence and then build into the Quranic verse and then demonstrate to you how that Quranic verse uh, is of amazing and uh, un inimitable, unparalleled rhetorical strength and force. And why, if that, if that phrase or that sentence were expressed in a slightly different way, if there were just one letter or one harf or one word that were, were different, even though it might be grammatically correct, the Arabs would have rejected the Qur'an and said, this is not the most rhetorically, rhetorically impactful way of making this statement. Okay? So I'm going to ask you a question, which is, um, how would you say Muhammad is the father of one of your men? Okay, and I think you know enough now to be able to say that yourself. So how would you say Muhammad? Muhammad. Muhammad, good. We can say Muhammadun. Right. Is the father of Abu, good. Muhammadun, Abu. One. What's the word for one? Ahad. Ahad. And so Abu would work with the word one in what way? Oh. In an ibafa. So can you give that to me? Ahadin. Ahad. Good. Ahadin. Of. Min. min. Good. Min. And then your men. Rijali. Kum. Rijali. Kum. Good. Rijali. Kum. Muhammadun Abu Ahadin min Rijali Kum. Right, and I'm now going to transport that to the past. And how would I do that? Kana. Kana. Good. So I say Kana. Kana. We put Kana at the beginning. And what's Kana going to do? To is it going to affect Muhammadun? No. no. Is it going to affect Abu? Yes. Yeah. And what's it going to do to it? Adha. It's going to make it Adha. Good. Why? Because it, Abu is the. The khabar. The khabar. Good. Not the object. It's the. It's the predicate. Yeah. So actually, let's do this with a different color pen. So, um, let's start again. So we've got. So what's what's Kana going to do to Abu? It's going to Abba. It's going to make it Abba. Abba. It's going to turn into Abba. Good. So we're going to have. Kana Muhammadun Aba and and then we'll have Ahadin min Rijalikum. Muhammad was the father of one of your men. Now, <coughs> how would we negate this? Ma. 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 Good. We say Ma Kana Muhammadun Aba Ahadin min Rijalikum. And that is a Quranic verse. Yeah? So Allah says, Abu Billah min Shaytani Rajim. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم. محمد was not the father of one of your men. ولكن but رسول الله the messenger of Allah. So Allah is saying that he may not be the father of one of your men. You may consider him to have no uh, no line, no continuing line, and you've called him أبتر. You've said that he's cut off. And in another surah, Allah says. Your detractor, he is the one who is cut off. Why? Because And the word kawthar comes from kathir, which means copious and plentiful. Allah has given him so much more. He's the messenger of Allah. You can't beat that one. Yeah. Maybe you've got sons. Maybe you have ten sons. But that doesn't beat being the messenger of Allah. And the, the seal of the prophets. Now, could we express this bit in a slightly different way? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What, what, how could you do that? Take the min out. Nice and loud? Take the min out. Okay, so if we take the min out, Sajjad, I want you to explain to me what would happen if we take the min out. 
Good. So the ahadin, we take off the tanween on ahadi. So we'd, we'd say, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدِ رِجَالِكُمْ And then it becomes a four-part idafa. So it would be, أَبَا أَحَدِ رِجَالِكُمْ So there's four parts to the idafa. The father of one of the men of youth. Yeah, so let's say that again. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدِ رِجَالِكُمْ Does that sound as rhetorically impactful to you as مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ Can you see the, 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 the impact of مُحَمَّدٌ and أَحَدٍ here in terms of the rhythm of the sentence? That's lost. And if that happened, and, and actually that, that, that sentence is just not as eloquent as مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ it's just not as eloquent. Yeah? And you remember we said at the beginning of level one, if you say salamun alaykum, that refers to all types of peace. The indefinite, the indefinite refers to types within the semantic range of the word. Whereas the definite, assalamu alaykum, refers to the essence or the notion or the concept of the word. Yeah? The mahiyah, we say in Arabic. So if we have an indefinite word here, it's referring more directly to each and every one of you. Each person who is a man among you. You see? So it's, 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 it's encompassing, comprehending all of the men among you. Whereas if you say, It would refer to just the fact that they are men, as opposed to the, the types of men or the quantity of men among you. Do you see? So the meaning would have a slightly different emphasis and therefore a different impact on the listener's mind. And if, if it were written like this in the Qur'an, the Arabs would have said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but actually no, this verse would be more impactful, more relevant, more balighh, if it were ahadin min rijalikum, you're not a true prophet. This can't be the word of God. They would have rejected the Qur'an because of the absence of a simple min. So this is the impact of the Qur'an, and this is why the Qur'an's challenge over 1400 years to the Arabs is produce a single verse, a single word like it, and you can't. Jazakumullah khair.